Hey guys, so I'm going to be talking about uh, George Orville's class of 1984. Um, it's definitely one of the best things in all of literature. I see why it's regarded as one of the finest novels of the 20th century, why it gets the hype as much as it does, and why it's a lot of people's, including mine, uh, one of their favorites. Um, there's so much to talk about, so I'll just try to jump right in. For those who haven't read it, it's a story set in what was then the future year 1984, at the time it was written, which was the 1940s. This was a very far away date. Which is interesting, because even though it's in our present time now, 30 years past, it is as timely today as it would have been then, probably more so. Um, but the story is set in a dystopian, totalitarian society, wherein the government controls at every aspect of society, controls people, uh, keeps them under under their power by in ignorance, by rewriting history and rewriting the news, covering up the truth, and brainwashing civilians to the point where they live by these very strict rules and doctrines. They uh, People can't come and go as they wish, they can't do what they want. Everything is closely monitored by, monitored and controlled by the government. This sounds scarily accurate because I feel like this is just around the corner for our society today. Um, you know, I think Orwell definitely knew what was coming when he wrote 1984. Um, and probably 1984 is just more of a metaphor. He probably didn't, literally didn't mean in the year 1984 AD, this is going to happen, but more, in some future date, this will be society. This is, this is where we're going, guys. And he's right. Um, you see it, you know, more and more in our current society in America, how everybody's cracking down on what we can do and can't do, um, how they're watching us, you know, they're you know, they're surveilling citizens, and even to the point of basically when investigated, rewriting history and showing themselves in a more positive light, which is exactly what they do in this novel. Um, and it's very, and it's brilliantly constructed because it's from the point of view of just an average Joe. He's a very average working white collar guy. Um, <clears throat> It's, he works in, like, this office for the government that takes old newspaper clippings from years before and rewrites them to show, <clears throat> to make it to where this, uh, overlord government was the benefactor of the people and makes it seem like, oh, our government did all this. Or if there's anything negative said about the leader of this government, it's erased and rewritten as he is a hero of the story. Um, and slowly he starts to realize how, how brainwashed he is. He starts to wake up and realize, oh, everything everyone's telling me is a lie. And it's because this mysterious fellow comes along and kind of opens his eyes and says, there's a different way. There's an underground resistance here. We're trying to get out. We're trying to break free. And, <clears throat> and he's like, yes, I want to be part of this. And um, I don't want to give away too much of the plot, but um, there's a woman who works with, and um, I think she's in a different department. And they, you know, they form a romantic connection. And she's kind of along for this ride. And, um, they both find out that breaking free of this totalitarian regime is a lot harder than it sounds. And I won't go any further. I just, um, I wanted to talk more in this video about just why, why you should read it. And that's because, one, it's just a great novel. It's hands down, just a classic. And two, it's 
you know, for for all the things it doesn't get right about the future, there's ten things it does. Um, this is definitely, <laughs> this is definitely very prophetic, and like I said a minute ago, scarily so. This is, like, holy shit, this is actually happening stuff written decades ago. I mean... In the 1940s. I mean, that was so many years ago. And it's like, you know, it's like he saw it coming, and he did. Orwell was a smart guy. He actually was also very political. He wrote a lot of essays about um, uh, current politics as well as political theory, uh, usually in a very mocking and sarcastic way, um, as well as other things. He just, he was a very prolific writer in general. Um, he... He wrote several novels, all of them different things. He wrote Animal Farm, which was is a, itself an allegory for communism. Um, <clears throat> he wrote a novel called Down and Out in Paris and London, which is an autobiographical novel about his experiences in those two cities. Um, he wrote a novel called Burmese Days, which was autobiographical about his experience in Burma as a soldier. And he also wrote tons of essays. He also had, wrote a column called As I Please, which was literally just whatever subject um, he thought was interesting enough to write about. He wrote several essays ranging from topics to about uh, Alice in Wonderland to um, the price of cigarettes versus books. So he was just a very all-around prolific guy, but he was very smart. And everything he wrote, which I've read quite a bit of his writing, he's a huge favorite of mine, he injects a very common sense no bullshit intelligence into what he's talking about. He knows his stuff, and he writes it in very plain language. I know my stuff. And this novel, while fiction, is basically a... Not only is it a warning against what could happen about uh, society becoming a, a totalitarian state, or an oligarchy, or a theocracy, or whatever, it could double as a political thesis. It could double as a, not only a political thesis, but it could be a, a sociological one, too, about how easily led people are and how easily influenced we can be. Um, to the point where, in the novel, like the government has set up banners and with mottos about things that we are brainwashed to believe, stating oppositional facts as truth, such as freedom, slavery, war is peace, you know, thing, that kind of thing. And these people... You know, much like in another great uh, dystopian novel, Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451, are so brainwashed by the state that they wholeheartedly believe this, and they're complacently just living their lives, um, doing what they're doing, and just easily, you know, given what, taking what they're given, not challenging anything, not questioning anything, but blindly just accepting things. And doping themselves, as Lennon says, with, you know, sex, drugs, and TV. Or religion, sex, and TV. True. And, um... Yeah. It's it's sad, but I see it every day. I see people just 